Commissioner Turner, I see you've joined the meeting. Would you like to do a mic check? Yes. Hi, everybody. Do you hear me? I sure do. Sounds great. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kathy. I see you've joined the meeting. Would you like to unmute and do a mic check? Mic check. Sounds good. Thank you, Kathy. Mm hmm.
Hey Spencer, I see you've joined the meeting. Would you like to do a mic check? Hello team, thank you, Courtney. Sorry I'm late. No worries. Courtney, can I do one more mic check? I added my headset. Sounds good. Thank you. And then I believe we have a quorum. Uh, Chair Norn, if you would like to get us started, we will go from there. Thank you so much, Stacy. Let's call this meeting to order. Uh, my name is Spencer Norn, and I have the pleasure of being the chair of our City of Ventura Parks and Rec Commission. Thank you for coming today on June 9th, uh, 2021. Um, with no further ado, can we um, please call this meeting to order and do roll call, Courtney? And then just to add in, I wanted to introduce Brittany Quintana will be our recording secretary. Um, so Brittany is new in this role. So if everyone could be patient and we have a new face, Courtney will continue to be the driver of the WebEx meeting, but Brittany will be our recording secretary. So Brittany, if you would like to take role. Yeah, of course. Um, Chair Norin. Here. Vice Chair Wood. Here. Uh, Commissioner Maristica. Maristica here. Maristica, thank you. Sorry. Commissioner Shapiro. Here. Commissioner Bremer. Here. Commissioner Turner. Here. Thank you. Thank you so much, Brittany, and welcome to the team. It's good to have you, and appreciate your help on the on the Parks and Rec Commission. Um, can we please have uh, any special presentations or announcements today, Stacy? We do not. Okay, thank you so much on that. Um, moving down our agenda, we're going to go into public communications. Do we have any public speakers here at this time? We do not. Okay, definitely do always encourage our public to come speak. So these meetings are on YouTube. So moving forward, even though we didn't have any public speakers, we definitely encourage our public to be speaking about Parks and Rec. And we know as commissioners that we can do that and feel our public communications through our commissioner notes as well. So oh, I just got a, a chat from somebody that wishes to speak. Fantastic. I talked long enough during public communications. You to bring did. Them in. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, bring them on in, please. Trevor Gotsman. Hi guys, thank you Spencer. Thanks for holding up the fort for me and now I've caught up with you guys. Um, I sent you an email this morning, uh, this afternoon and uh, you know, I just wanted to commend you on the um, on the GPAC last meeting on all your comments and aspirations. And um, you know, so I, I wanted to suggest to you that, and now that you've got the golf course on, um, you know, one of my big pushes, because I've got two Huskies that uh, lead me around everywhere, I need space and within the confines of um, the streets and sidewalks and everything, uh, it's, uh, it's a real challenge for a lot of people. And um, it, it's, uh, so we need space, we need to get out. And um, I usually go to Santa Barbara Montecito in the hills and things like that, but I've made this my home. This is my home. I need to be able to play in the backyard and with the dogs and then just come back and deal with the community and, you know, work in the community. So I would like to see paths all around the city and from within the city, from every neighborhood into out into the natural habitat. And then even in that area, use that as a resource for building the fire breaks, for maintaining shelters so that you can shelter in place. Um, evacuation type shelters, but just, you know, like golf courses, like sort of like just le um, almost like lean to kind of things, but just rough, rough it initially, um, just to get into back into touch with everything and all around us and and just appreciate it all. So, um, and you guys are the, this is the department parks and rec and, um, but with all the whole city, the whole city, you know, the all hazards department, um, uh, the fire, the police, everyone, we're all integral. And so, um, that's what I just feel. I feel this is the, you know, you guys can spur a lot of it because we all 
enjoy i still enjoy recreating and sitting around at the parks and meeting and what have you so that's pretty much what i wanted to say and i'll be around hopefully to keep things moving well i am around and as i said just do it um do it for the right reasons respect appreciate the least and the, uh, you know everything has to be appreciated if you can't love it leave it let it be and live in the truth you know face the truth face it acknowledge where you where you, what the fears are and then face them deal with it acknowledge find and know acknowledge where you stand that's the truth and then you that's the respect we need to give everything so thank you and this is it trevor gotsman signing off i'll be present though if you need me thank you thank you okay trevor thank you so much for those comments um definitely loud and heard by the commission and we appreciate you taking the time to share that with us very important and uh, if, if staff needs to communicate back to you, we will. So thank you, Trevor. Um, with no public, further public comments, um, we're going to move into our consent items, which is going to be the approval of our of our minutes of our meeting during the month of May. So if I could ask Brittany, please, to get um, a roll call. Oh, excuse me. Can I please ask for uh, a motion to the approval of the minutes? Or do we have any questions about the minutes that Stacy is here to answer? I have one comment on the minutes there, Spencer. Please, Mr. Uh, Commissioner Shapiro, go right ahead. Yeah, there's a correction that I think we need on the second page about Kemper Sports presentation. Um, it's currently drafted that they're presenting gold. I think it's supposed to be golf. So. We would like gold. Yeah, it'd be great. That's uh, <laughs> actually, I think, is that in the minutes or is that a part of the agenda? It's in the minutes from okay. last month's meeting. Okay. I, I found it, Courtney. We will make that correction. If you would like to make a motion to move with that correction, Mr. Morostica. Uh, well, I'm Mr. Shapiro, but I'll make a uh, motion to, uh, <laughs> to approve with that correction. Commissioner Shapiro, appreciate that. Uh, Second. Okay, we have a first um, from Commissioner Shapiro and a second from um, Vice Chair Wood. Thank you. Calling um, roll on that, please. Sorry, I cut out. Um, Chair Norin. Your sound didn't come through. Uh, yes. Perfect. Okay. Got it. Sorry. Um, Vice Chair Wood? Yes. Uh, Commissioner, I'm going to say it wrong, Maristica? Mar Marastica. Marastica, sorry. Yes. Um, Commissioner Shapiro? Yes. Commissioner Bremer? Yes. Commissioner Turner? Yes. Okay, thank you so much for that. We're moving down our agenda on today and this month's meeting. And with no further ado, let's get down into our informal items. What we've all been waiting for a presentation today from the city of Ventura golf operations. Mr. Carl Van Valier is I'm going to go for the last name. Please connect, uh, correct me if I need that. But with our group that runs our courses, we're great to hear our presentations about what's going on, updating us. So with no further ado, Carl, welcome to the Parks and Rec Commission from the city of Ventura and please take over. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much. Appreciate that. Waiting for a slide to begin. I can't Courtney. tell. Is the slide up? No, not yet. Courtney, are you there? Keep. Yep, there we go. All yours, Carl Van. All right, thanks. <laughs> uh, if you can go to the next slide, please. Yeah, so the golf course history, a brief overview of each golf course, uh, Buena Ventura Golf Course was renovated in 2004 and 2005 by Forrest Richardson. It was uh, originally a William Bell design and Forrest Richardson, he uh, uh, specializes in redesigning those. Uh, I wasn't around necessarily for that design, um, but it uh, finishes up as a parkland style golf course. 
which you can see here, plenty of trees, lots of lakes. Um, that defines a parkland style golf course versus, if you'd go to the next slide, please, Olivas Links. Uh, Olivas Links was renovated in 2006 and opened in 2007. I was uh, in charge of opening Olivas Links for the city of Ventura, and it is a links style golf course. You notice the trees are not as profound there. Um, it is more of a rolling, like I guess you would say, drier golf course. The difference between the two being that the parkland style golf course, like Buena Ventura golf course, is more of a plush green uh, park, basically where Olivas Lynx uh, is now a little drier, faster, less trees, um, less water, and it really blends into more of the uh, arid type uh, ocean um, land that it's located on. The thing that really sets out Olivas Lynx is it was ranked number 10 in Golf Week's best municipal golf courses in 2009, um, which really put the golf course on the map. Once we got that ranking, Olivas Links really got set apart from most of the golf courses in the area as a premier destination golf course. And if you'd go to the next slide, please. Jumping into the financials, um, financials for both golf courses. Um, the rounds of golf year to date, so through April, we are at 120,000 rounds. And the revenue is about $100,000 above 5 million. And the net income, that is the contribution to the city after all expenses, is a million nine. We're going to compare a little bit from 2018 19, uh, because that technically is the first year or the only year we had uh, within the last few that is a complete year. Obviously, 1920 with uh, COVID 19 uh, held us back for a couple months there. But talking about the rounds of golf, the total rounds of golf for the year, uh, fiscal year 1819, were 119,000 rounds. And through April, we're already at that amount of 120,000 rounds. Through April year to date of 120,000 rounds compared to 2019, um, 2019 rounds, there were 97,000 rounds played. So it was a 23% increase from last year, 2019, to rounds played in 2021. Huge jump. Uh, the reason that's really important to look at right now is because the National Golf Foundation, they have statistics from across the country, nationwide statistics in rounds increases after reopening and their rounds increases average about 14% up to 26%. Currently, we're at 22% compared to budget is our increase in rounds. And uh, against the nation, uh, we're about 23%. Uh, so we're in that top percentage of round increases, which is pretty special for Ventura. I mean, it's a great place to live and also a great place to play golf and uh, have some nice recreation as well. So looking down below, you can see the increased golf demand on total revenue is 7% versus 1819, and that's at 7% above. And like I say, that's finishing out the full fiscal year from 1819, we still have two months to go. Next slide. COVID-19 impacts. So hey, we, quick uh, question, Carl, before you jump over there. Sure. Um, with the distinction between the increase in total revenue and the increase in um, in income, it's substantial. So is that, we just had a lot of cost savings or realignment? How'd that work? Well, it's, it's a combination of both. I mean, with the rounds increase and the contribution to the city so far, there are intentional cost savings or flow through from the revenue and also operating expenses and payroll. Uh, the OPEX went up. Uh, quite a bit with the additional safety uh, positions we have now and also PP&E and those kind of things. And the payroll is uh, also has gone up a little bit by state of California minimum wage increases, as well as safety positions. Some of the savings in there were achieved 
not necessarily by design, but because of labor shortages. But uh, essentially with the flow through of the top line of a million dollars to the bottom line, we're a million dollars ahead as well. So the increases so far are short term increases um, because we're able to operate within basically our budgeted operating expenses. As we move further along, if this wear and tear and traffic on the golf courses continues, we'll see operating expenses start to move up. But currently right now, I mean, that's that's basically where we're at. Thanks. Yep, you're welcome. Now the COVID-19 impacts, um, the course closures uh, happening in March, March 23rd, I believe. Uh, we was total loss of revenue. Um, i find that real quick. Yeah, we had to close on March 23rd. As the state entered the public health stay at home orders and we were closed through April 20th. Uh, we opened, reopened on the 20th. We had to furlough all departments, uh, basically 60 non-essential employees. The department heads, we remained employed to assist with the Ventura PD as ground security, as well as our course and ground staff to maintain the golf course while it was closed. There are some procedures that you have to maintain on a golf course. Otherwise, the damages from being closed would cost a significant amount of money to repair. So we kept them on board and total revenue loss for the period of time we were closed from the 23rd through the 20th of April was roughly $438,000 in total revenue. So since reopening, uh, April 2020, so that was the 20th we reopened, it's been challenging because the initial operational restrictions and the social distance uh, measures that were in place, they restricted food and beverage, which is still fairly restricted now, uh, but it was completely restricted then as well as cart revenue. So any of the financials that you saw from April, May and June prior year were pretty much about golf revenue. Um, they started easing cart restrictions but the difficulty in easing with the cart restrictions was that they were only allowing one player in each cart. So having a full fleet of 72 carts, essentially, that gets us through about four and a half hours of play. But seeing when we were closed um, or we were restricted down to a single rider situation, we were technically running out of carts by about 8, 30, 9 o'clock, depending upon the play. So now it became a situation that uh, was difficult to manage with players that were expecting carts and as well as like food and beverage to be sold at the course because four and a half hours, zero food and beverage, that became a, a task that uh, was, was hard to deal with. Um, thankfully, everything moved forward through there and we got uh, more and more of our operations back in line with uh, typical golf course operations. To date still though, our merchandise and food and beverage still suffers because of the restrictions that are in place. And I believe we can move on from that slide. The ongoing challenges, uh, nationwide we are suffering uh, a labor shortage. Uh, for Camper Sports, we sent out some, uh, some communications about the labor shortages specifically in food and beverage and also course and grounds, our maintenance teams. We're seeing uh, that some of the programs that are in place to help out with unemployment as well as, um, you know, um, federal programs, they are causing uh, difficulty getting some workers to return back to work as well as some of our labor force because of the shutdown, because of like the food and beverage side being closed so long, they uh, found other avenues for employment and or income. So technically you just don't wanna to return to work. Um, that is part of the savings, like I mentioned before on the labor side, it helped us uh, achieve some of the net gains, but um, we're hoping as we move forward that we can regain some of that workforce because we will need them, especially with the course and grounds. Um, this much wear and tear on a golf course, we will certainly need to be full staff to be able to keep up with the traffic and the footwear on these golf courses. 
Another challenge that's uh, going on is uh, property damage and theft. Um, we've had several break-ins, um, several things stolen, items such as golf cars or whatnot. Uh, some have been recovered, some have not. Um, range balls, uh, anything that isn't. Yeah, you can back that up a little bit there. Yeah, anything that isn't really nailed down or hardened in a in a building or whatnot. We're seeing that more and more um, criminal activity is happening at the golf courses, and it could be simply, you know, the sign of the times. People that are hurting or suffering as far as like loss or income. And then basically where we're located, there is a criminal element that uh, lives and also, uh, I don't know if you'd say operates, probably that's a good word for it, operates uh, in the river bottom and surrounding areas. So that's always been a challenge. The natural disasters, uh, wildfires that are impacting the golf courses, uh, the river bottom and that foliage and dense area through there. When we have Santa Ana winds, we've had several fires that happen around the golf courses, um, basically through the river bottoms. Some of those have been uh, campfire set. Some have been, uh, I believe, uh, investigated as arson. But due to our location, we have seen quite a bit of that. And when the wildfires happen, depending on how close to the golf course they get, we will have to evacuate the golf course and close down for, could be hours and it could be days, depending on how long that fire lasts. Some of the ongoing challenges too um, are deferred maintenance projects, being that it's difficult to keep the, the staff for the course and grounds and also outside service um, to the levels we need. Some of the bigger projects are pushed back now due to that, just to be able to simply maintain daily operations in both of those um, departments. And then, you know, the, the facilities themselves, um, Olivas Links is operating out of a double wide um, office trailer, essentially, as well as temporary bathrooms. And then uh, Buenaventura Golf Course, the Buenaventura Banquet Center is in need of repairs to be able to brought, be up to, uh, brought up to operating, not code, but operating standards to be able to offer larger events and outings. So those are some of the facility items that are in, I guess you would say, uh, most need right now for both golf courses. And next slide. Any questions on these things and we could Discuss yeah, a little further. Yeah. Carl, thank you so much for that presentation. Um, I know we're definitely gonna have some questions coming through and I know I do, uh, but Great. I wanna say first off, thanks for your hard work. You know, it seems like you've been with the courses for a long time, starting with the opening of the Olivas as you described in 06, and now currently at San Buenaventura. Would you mind describing, has that been a full term, that whole 14 years, or I guess 15 years, now working for Kemper on the two courses? A full term, yeah, absolutely. I started out as the head golf professional at Olivas Links uh, in charge of operations and uh, moved up to be the general manager with that company at Olivas uh, alone specifically. And then when Kemper Sports uh, got the contract, they felt it would be best to model um, some other of their properties in their portfolio to have one general manager oversee multiple golf courses. So at that time, uh, I went from uh, um, the GM over Olivas Links, Kemper Sports brought in a Kemper Sports general manager, and I was given the director of golf title for Olivas Links and Buenaventura Golf Course, which was uh, a big boost to my career. I mean, it was pretty fantastic now. I have multiple facility operations. Um, I learned more about both styles of golf courses, right? The Parkland style, the um, link style, as well as the working with both demographics. Um, with Buena Ventura being a shorter, easier golf course, it's really good with family members and seniors. And then with Olivas Links being the longer, more difficult golf course, it's really good with tournament operations. So you really start seeing all the development in each of these categories as far as revenue goes. 
And then when I became the general manager, um, that was a whole other step up in my career, dealing with all facets, facets of the business. So I'd say everything about my career so far at these properties is about learning and getting better. And it's been fantastic. Thank you for sharing that story. And I think that's what's important about um, your knowledge of these courses and having it from up and down to left and right. The yeah. experience. I just learned this personally, multiple uh, companies coming through. I've heard great things about your operations. I, of course, me personally grew up here, um, play as a child, but don't freak it as much as Commissioner Morosica and Commissioner Wood. So all yeah. of that stuff is just great to know that we have that knowledge and history on our team and working hard out there every day. Um, with that knowledge and stuff, my first question I had quickly was, you talked about your concerns, and was it concerns or uh, needs, the, the last slide you showed, um, the labor force, criminal activity, the natural disaster, and the banking operations. Would you have a specific need or something at the top of the list? I hear all of those through the community uh, slightly, but coming from that, if you were to prioritize it all or any type of thing, would you see the course needs immediately or? Well, if it's the best way to say this, uh, if it was unlimited funds, yes, I'd have a list uh, that, that would be uh, prioritized as funds are, you know, due to COVID-19 and, uh, you know, municipalities and government agencies being um, very frugal with their, their spending, which they need to be, um, I would say protecting your assets first. Uh, we've been working with uh, the Parks and Rec Department on hardening up the facilities to protect those assets, such as, you know, um, avoiding theft, deterring theft in those lights. So uh, we're continually working with that. I would say immediately those are the needs we need to uh, address to protect what assets we have. And then finding solutions uh, as we move down the road with uh, facilities, like uh, some type of facilities um, potentially, uh, the golf shop, um, food and beverage operation at Olivas links and, or potentially the banquet center at Buenaventura golf course, simply from a revenue standpoint. So I'd look at those as far as prioritizing. If it was unlimited funds, I'd say, let's start building buildings tomorrow. But the reality is we need to protect what we have now on deck. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of clarity. And. We know going through some of these budget uh, break workshops the last couple of months, uh, we all start dreaming big and we can dream big when we have this beautiful of a city, right? And the, and the course is right there next to this great stuff. So that's the great opportunity we have. Uh, I would I'd like to field a couple more questions and comments maybe. Um, and who's ready to go off? Uh, Commissioner Bremer, do you have a few questions? I'll start with you. I You. Sorry, um, I actually I don't. I'm not much of a golf expert, so I I'm just listening and trying to absorb the information. Uh, one tiny question though: um, Do you have trouble with graffiti out there at all? Um, not so much graffiti. Uh, there's a lot of window breaking and theft uh, right now. Thankfully, it hasn't been a lot of graffiti. We had issues with. Um, the restrooms at both golf courses because we have golf course bathrooms that are located far away from the club far away from the club. okay yeah, okay i wondered because we're there coming are in clearly definitely issues with graffiti around the community that's why i was curious thank you no I'll just uh, yeah I'll just... thank you commissioner bremer appreciate that and carl for your response stacy you have something to say real fast no, I was just going to mention with the feedback, if once you're done speaking, if you place on mute and then we won't get the echo. So, Carl Van, did uh -huh. you want to finish your thought in regards to the keypads that uh, we installed on yeah. the field restrooms? Go ahead. Yeah, please. Um, we were uh, having difficulty with the on course bathrooms out there with um, the vagrant population next to the golf courses that would regularly go into them steal the paper product um, and vandalize inside of those and or use them as uh, showers and, and whatnot as their own personal use. Obviously, that's pretty alarming if you open up a restroom and then somebody's in there and you're playing golf, you know. So we installed uh, security doors and also locking keypads to eliminate that problem. 
And so far, uh, knock on wood, it's been uh, really effective and um, we are able to keep our staff and golfers safer because of that. So that's that's pretty much the, the vandalism side of it. But I mean, uh, we haven't seen much as far as like spray painting or graffiti. Thank you, Carl. Um, other com uh, questions or comments from commissioners? Yeah, I've got a, a number of, uh, I, I, I was thinking we'd see more of a presentation, more details uh, actually on the, um, on the financials particularly, but um, let me just start, let me start with the, um, the, the environment, current situation. So do we have a plan, um, a transition plan from here in terms of opening up, you know, I think we're supposed to start opening things up maybe at the end of next week in terms of opening the clubhouse, opening the grill, getting sand back uh, on the courses, those those kind of things that we still haven't completed the transition on. Uh, the final thing left for transitioning to open up, let me see when we uh, we were under the, the health orders is going to be the food and beverage and retail side. And that's about it. As far as no sand out there either, there's no sand on the course. Sand on the course. Oh, well, the golf the carts, car. the golf yeah. course have the golf carts have sand in them now. But as far as public, like shareable sand, um, we don't have that yet. So that'll be going back out there. Right. The ball washers are back out. Right. The rakes are back out. Right. Um, yeah, it would be just entrance to buildings currently. So once June fifteenth, once we see what is truly opened up at that point, you'll see more operations with uh, food and beverage that'll be opened back up. I can't say fully 100% right now, probably more flow through at Buena Grill. And Olivas Links has packaged and always has had pre-packaged food. So it would be a flow through for the retail operation as well, just a one line going through. Now, I, I know you were talking about the, you know, the expense issues and being able to do certain things or not do certain things. I know we've got some some plans on the the clubhouse and and the banquet facilities does the first question there is that does the revenue generated by the golf courses stay within the golf course budget if you will to, to be used within the golf courses for improvements and do we have at this point any specific plans for those two uh, major improvements so the proceeds or the, the net income actually flows through uh, completed this city. Now we have budgeted expenses and revenues that uh, are laid out that we stay within. Um, but none of that is actually set aside for capital improvements such as clubhouse and or new pro shop or uh, food and beverage options at Olivas. Does that answer your question? Uh, well, partially, yes. Yeah. So you answered the first part. The second part is, I guess, given that, that I'm, I'm assuming that we don't have any plans for the capital improvements at this point. Vice at Chair Woods, point. let me let me jump in on that. It's Nancy O'Connor, Director of Parks and Recreation. Hey. Um, Carl Van is is doing a wonderful job, and um, I know that he's not privy to everything, you know, with what we've got going on. Um, the the revenues that come into the city once we uh, uh, got rid of the enterprise fund back in 2018, it's a general fund revenue. So the revenues just come in just like any other revenue that we get from parks and recreation. And so that is a general fund revenue that, you know, the city uses in, in you know, a, a variety of ways. We do have plans um, on the clubhouse for Olivas. And um, we are working with Kemper on trying to bring those plans to fruition. There's a lot of moving parts. But it is something that we have been working on, gosh, Carl Van, what, 10 years at least since I've been here. Um, we are working on it. There are a variety of, not obstacles, but challenges that we need to overcome. But it is something that that is definitely in the forefront of what we're trying to accomplish as soon as we possibly can. All right, thanks. Uh, Nancy, I have a question. Go ahead. So given that, um, I hate to say this as a, as a commissioner, but I, I'm not going to hold my breath um, because it has been in the works for so long. Um, can you be give a more specific timeline as to when this could come to fruition? Because I keep hearing about a clubhouse at Olivas 
um, but it, it never, you know, comes to fruition. Absolutely. Uh, Commissioner, one of the things that um, I'm, I'm not sure the last time you went out and played, but if you looked closely on your receipt, you will see that $1 of your fee goes to a, a golf reserve or a capital reserve fund. And we have enough money in that fund now to actually um, commission a set of plans. We have had um, some local architects that have offered pro bono services to draw up at least to get us going on a set of plans. Stacy and Eric Burton and Carl Van and I have been working on some behind the scenes of where are we on some of the water issues? Where are we on some of the, you know, just the ground issues? So we've been doing some behind the scenes work during COVID to get get us in a position where we could actually say, okay, we have enough money, let's give some money to an architect to draw up a set of plans. Kemper has uh, expressed to us numer numerous times that they are interested in partnering with us on, on a way to build this. So it would be a private public partnership. And we really feel that we've got some momentum. We've just got some things that we wanna make sure that we've taken care of first. We were told, and I'm just going to give you a quick example. We were told that there were some issues with some water capacity. And so we had to get the water department out there to look at current things to make sure that we had the ability, could the current water system be able to um, support what kind of a clubhouse that we want to do? Before we do anything other than, you know, really kind of go forward with this, hey, this, these are the type of things we need to involve the commission and the community on what are your ideas and we want to hear what the community and this commission feels about what kind of a clubhouse do we want. We're going to get one shot to build this and we want to make sure that it's a, a space that's big enough that it, we can do something with it, but not so big that we can't financially support it. Well, we've also got the Olivas Adobe there. And if, if there's a way to build this facility that can also serve events that are at the Adobe, that's what we want to look at. How can we get the most bang for our buck? So, but to do any of that, we have some background work that we need to be able to do. And that's what we've been doing the last several months. So I would say that we'll come back to this commission probably maybe not the end of this year just because of the fact that we have our cip process for the next several months but probably the very beginning of next year to put together a subcommittee that could sit on a design team to help us look at what would a clubhouse look like that could service the adobe and the golf course thank you and then i, I think i need to this might be a good piggyback question um or more of a just to get this on record um can either you or Carl address uh, the concerns that some of the community have, because you hear this all the time, um, that the golf course is not profitable. Um, and there's, they're looking at it at a, from a different perspective or, or including certain things that shouldn't be included in the profitability of the golf course. But can either you or Carl address that? So those that are listening and also so we can get on the record, you know, you know is the golf course profitable? Absolutely. So Carl Van um, has, you know, as he as he said earlier, that he's been intimately involved with these golf courses for a really long time. And I came on in 2011, and I have a background in golf. And so one of the things that we started looking at um, pretty intensively, because Carl Van knew about these issues, was that we were in an enterprise fund, and the general fund expenses were being charged that enterprise fund. For example, the golf courses were being charged a land lease every year, and they had been charged that for decades. No other city amenity was paying a land lease fee. And that's just one example. And so at the end of the day, all these fees or all these expenses were charged to the enterprise fund. And at the end of the day, at the end of the fiscal year, the enterprise fund couldn't balance. Additionally, the golf courses also paid the debt every year. The, the service debt that we had to take on to renovate the courses, the golf courses had to pay that. And they did pay that. But at the end, when we were getting ready to balance, because of those fees that were charged 
that should have been charged to the general fund were charged to the enterprise fund, the golf course on paper showed a deficit. And so the general fund then loaned the enterprise fund a certain amount of money so that we could be neutral. And this was brought up year after year after year, year and we, we, we tried to, to get some clarity on it and to get some equity, equity on it. In 2016, after going to the city manager at the time, probably for the fourth time, he said, let's bring this to council. And so we met with council. It was an incredibly long meeting. It was in June of 2017. And we laid out our case and we showed how all of this, all of these fees had been charged to the enterprise fund that should have been charged to the general fund, resulting in this temp, this, this technically that looks like a loan, but in reality wasn't, it was just on paper. And the, the council at the time agreed to get rid of the enterprise fund, to treat golf like any other amenity, to not charge a land lease fee and to only charge any type of uh, overhead that was charged just like any other department. And ever since then, golf has shown a profit. In addition, golf continues to pay their debt or the debt on the, the money that we borrowed to do the renovations. So yes, we show a profit every single year. Thank you, Nancy, I appreciate that. And I hope that uh, the commissioners, if they ever hear anything you know, about the golf course not being profitable, I hope they can share that information with everybody. I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to say that. And I'm sorry that it took so long, but there's a little bit of nuances to it. And I wanted to make sure that we were able to, you know, I, I wanted to give you the, the as much as I could quickly. Uh, as a follow-up to that, can we go back to that slide that had the financials on it? Quick, I was gonna say, uh, Director O'Connor, thank you so, so much for answering that question. And then absolutely, uh, floor is back to you, Vice Chair Wood. Thank you. Thank you, sorry about that. So. So, yeah, so looking at this then, uh, Director O'Connor, so net income then is close to $2 million for the current fiscal year, year to date, right? And with two months to go, Carl Van, as you mentioned. So that speaks to the profitability, correct, of the, of the organization? Absolutely. Yeah, it certainly does. Um, yeah, we're a million dollars ahead of budget currently. So as far as profitability goes, we're doing very well as far as the operation and flow through net income goes. Yeah, exactly. That was kind of the point I was trying to make earlier from my standpoint, from a, from a margins perspective, it's a tremendous margin, right? When you look Thank at you. the income to revenue. Right. Thank you. Yeah. So outstanding. And, and that is 100% Carl Van and Kemper. They just do an outstanding job. I mean, we have got a tremendous partner in them. They know what they're doing. They have dozens of properties and um, they're just great people to work with as well. So Carl Van, yeah, I know you're probably blushing a little bit, but I mean that <laughs> I mean that sincere, sincerely. And again, yes, I, mean, yes. to be a problem, I don't mean to be a problem on this, but, and I'm sure it's out, maybe out of all of our hands, but there's a way we can get some of that income plowed back into the operation. I, I think that'd be a big win. Uh, so Carl Van, sorry, one more question and then I'll stop, I promise. Um, I know there's been a lot of um, load on the employees over this past uh, year, right? Through this situation and with the, the increase in volume and the new, you know, the stress of the situation. Um, they, they've done a fabulous job. I'm out there every week and I have nothing but commendations for the, the folks at the clubhouse and, and the grill everywhere. But have you got a sense of the employee satisfaction? Are they, are they doing okay? Do they, they feel satisfied at this point? They do. Yeah. And it's, uh, the nice thing about the golf business is that myself, our head golf professional, assistant general manager, and other department heads, we we truly have a family out there. It's a special place to be. Uh, golf is the the binding factor. Uh, when you don't see us and maybe a couple of your favorite staffers, uh, we're trying our best to take them to go play golf to other facilities, to get out and away from there just to recharge their batteries, right? So we... Uh, we do, a, I believe, a fairly good job of that as far as team morale goes. Um, we were unable to host our annual Christmas party uh, this year. So uh, to say thank you to our staff, we intend to have our Christmas party in June. So we uh, continually try to find ways to keep people 
um, focused on golf, not just the golf courses and golfers or separating operations, but all of golf, like one big golf family. So that's what I think sets us apart from other facilities through the county. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. Great questions, uh, Vice Chair Wood. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. And Carl, thank you for more information. Commissioner Turner, I know you're, you're a golfer, my buddy. Well, I used to be. I'm really not much anymore, but I'd like to be again um, in my old age, or whatever. Um, I've been taking notes and then scribbling them out as we've been going along because you've been answering the questions as we've been going. So a lot of the stuff that I would have asked is redundant. And I don't want to really participate in this if it's not for the positive of this. I really think Commissioner uh, Morostica nailed it with it needs to be on it needs to be on an agenda. It really does. And I would support that for sure. I totally support golf in our community. Um, when I go to play golf, I look at it kind of differently than, I mean, yes, I want to fast greens and I want, you know, to be able to play a good game, but speed of play is huge for me. And I really, really liked back in the day, I would just go down and drive balls and I'd go to the restaurant and, and I just so missed that. I would love to see something at a us again. And it sounds like everyone's working on that, but I totally support it in any way for fundraising, whatever else we could do. I would support anything to get a facility, a food and beverage facility back at Olivas um, links. Um, and I thought there was a banquet room and I, maybe I'm mistaken at um, the San Buena Ventura. Maybe there was is still is it's just not being used because of COVID, but that was a really nice facility as well. Um, and a draw for the public. And I think drawing the public down to these courses is just key financially for the city and for people to get outside and live and do something. So that's really all my comments on it. Um, I support it. I think we need it on the agenda. It's been too long. Um, even the 2016 comments I've been hearing, that's five years ago. Again, it's just another year, another year, another year keeps going by. Let's support um, our golf courses and let's let's move forward with this stuff. So that's my comments. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. Um, I had a quick comment just jumped my mind though. So uh, any more comments or questions from commissioners? I'm not seeing any hands at the moment. Um, I know I have one quick question. Yeah, Spencer, um, I got I got a question. Okay, Commissioner Roshka, go ahead, please. Yeah, Carl. Um, any uh, more update on um, the viability or the possibility of um, hosting any um, mini tour events or anything? I know that the length of the golf course at Olivas was a was kind of a a barrier. Um, can we get any more length out of that golf course and and possibly um, being an attraction to some of these mini tour events? Uh, still working on that. Yeah, the. Uh... The mini tour events um, aren't technically what we're after. We're looking for the bigger qualifiers. Like we've hosted the Cal State Open qualifier before. Uh, we would like that re to return, but the Southern California PGA has uh, brought that more in house and they're only working with um, what used to be the former Southern California PGA golf course. But um, Anna's doing a really good job of uh, still communicating and working with those folks. The McKenzie tour, um, the qualify for what they call the Canadian tour. They were caught in a contract battle and they have to uh, stay with the facility they're at for a few more years. Um, I'm hoping that, well, it's not the McKenzie tour anymore. They, they just changed sponsors. I'm hoping that we can uh, discuss it with them again. Uh, I think they like the location. I like, I think they like the fact that this is a place that doesn't necessarily have any uh, uh, attention grabbing distractions for their tour players. Currently they're playing at a golf course that is uh, owned by a tribal casino. So they're seeing some, uh, some bad things happen, I guess, with their players and, you know, in, in those situations. So um, I, I believe that once their their contracts run out with them, that they will be looking and we will certainly be pitching. That's for sure. We'll, We'll want them here. It'd be a great draw. Thanks, Carl. Yeah, you bet. Thank you. 
Yeah, thank you, Carl. And if there's anything that commissioners can do to help you reach out to any of those facilities or those groups, please let us know too, because we're definitely willing to assist you on that as well. Um, yeah, not a problem. Um, I had just maybe two quick questions was, you said the golf course has missed some staff. Does that mean the golf course is currently hiring right now? Absolutely, yep. We Did certainly are course and ground staff and we are awaiting June 15th to see what is truly gonna be open and available for our food and beverage operations. And uh, we we certainly will need some staff for that. Yeah, thank you, staff especially. Yeah. Excellent employment opportunity being provided to the community. Fantastic, thank you. And then my last comment was, I believe it was Commissioner Bremer a few meetings ago when we had the dry tornado come through. We had trees fall on the course, especially I think on the San Buenaventura. We had some trees falling there. Would you mind updating me currently on just on the quick urban forestry situation at that course? Do you feel content with it? How could how could we assist in that sense if possible? Um, well, the removal is one thing. Uh, replacement of trees, uh, it would it, we're doing fairly well with the replacement of trees. We work closely with uh, uh, Nancy and Tom as far as that goes, and where budgets will allow, we are getting trees from them. So it's nice. It's a it's a good partnership already. Um, it's just it's a little painful seeing such large old trees go down that's yeah. the thing i mean we have replaced uh, numerous trees already but you know they're the smaller younger trees that really don't take notice of you know but uh 10 years from now you certainly will but not right now but so far so good i think do golf courses along that note ever bring in i know trees are investments and very expensive assets but do golf courses bring in mature trees in that sense of say 10, 15, 20 years and make more investments in that sense? Or is it normally known to start smaller? Uh, it's, it's typically smaller. Um, number one is just the cost of trying to get them in there and craning them in. Sure. And then with the older trees, uh, you do have a higher risk of them uh, not making it, right? Tap roots running deep and if you don't get that entire tap root, you'll, you'll have a problem. No, great philosophy. And I wanna give uh, yeah. Director O'Connor and uh, uh, manager Tom Martin, a uh, heads up too for giving and being proactive with that planning. I had not heard about that. And so that makes me feel good that you're there monitoring that and filling that in. So thank you for that information. Yeah, they've been really good partners with that. Okay, excellent. And uh, with no, if anyone else has any further comments or questions, and Stacy, I know you want to say something. Thank you, dear. <laughs> I do. I just want to echo Nancy's uh, sentiment. Uh, Kemper Sports and Carl Van and his entire team truly go above and beyond COVID this past year has been challenging and they have knocked it out of the park and their customer service has remained on point. And I just want to give a heartfelt thank you to Carl Van for hanging in there with us and Kemper Sports and your entire team. So kudos to you, to you all out there. Thank you so much. Thank you, Stacey. And then uh, Chair Norin, uh, just to be mindful, we will have another meeting coming in using the platform uh, shortly. So just wanted to give that a uh, gentle reminder as well. Thank you, Stacey, so much. So Carl, with no further uh, comments, I wanna say thank you so much for the hard work you're continuing to do on the golf courses and coming and bringing it to the commission. And we're always here for you as the youth express that you're here for us in the continued communication. So thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate that. Okay, let's move forward here um, down our agenda into staff communications. Uh, so bids for the second entrance at Ventura Community Park have been received. It is tentatively scheduled to go to council to award on July 12th. We will keep you posted. Recreation programs are all set to begin Monday, June 14th. Uh, so we're ready to jump back in feet first uh, on Monday. And then Chair Norin had asked about the water truck. Uh, Chair Norin, would you like me to provide an update, uh, a general overview or? Uh, please, yes. I'll just okay. briefly just address that I asked a question off of the note from the College Community Council from the Tree Alliance and Christian Years Report. So that's where the information came from. Stacy, go ahead. Okay, so we operate a 4,000 gallon water truck, which requires a special license and a water truck endorsement. Uh, we fill it with recycled water, which takes some time. Once the truck leaves the yard to fill, it takes approximately two hours to leave from the yard, go fill, and get all set up. Then each 15-gallon gator bag, the green gator bags attached to the new trees, uh, take approximately 10 minutes to fill. 
and then uh, with rolling the hose up and moving on to the next tree, each tree uh, fill can take up to 20 minutes. So on average, an eight hour workday will be able to water 24 trees. So five days a week, we're looking at 120 trees per week being able to be watered. Newly planted trees take two years to establish and need watering. The key to planting more trees in our community takes involvement from our residents and the commitment to water newly planted trees. In addition to tree watering for the water truck, we also have other obligations for the truck and water. We water the botanical gardens and a Royal Verde Park. We are limited on the number of hours the truck can run. Uh, that is why it's critical to partner with our community and work with residents for watering newly planted trees here in Ventura. You Stacy. Yes, and that is end of staff communications. Okay, I had a quick question on that um, in the community. If you might be able to answer is that can somebody volunteer if they have the credentials to work for a volunteer for that water truck. To drive the water uh, truck, a member of the Ventura tree Alliance. When we were planting the tree, said, I'm willing to drive the truck around in water. And that was just a question I'd like to answer for that community member. I don't believe so. Uh, you would give risk management a heart attack. Uh, it takes a specialized license plus the water endorsement. And so, as with any of our city vehicles, we can't have a volunteer uh, getting behind the wheel just for liability reasons. Um, so, yeah, no. I will let that eager beaver of a volunteer know. Thank you. Not a problem at all. Uh, let's move down into thank you so much for completing um, staff communications. Moving down into commissioner communications. I, I have a question related to watering trees. Um, I want to make sure I didn't misunderstand Nancy at the budget presentation at city council on Monday night. Um, I understood her to say that we could only really water 200 trees a year. Am I miss? Did I get that wrong? Approximately 120. Well, new trees with the water rotations. You're correct. Like, we can't go out and plant 600 trees because of the time it takes to water those newly established trees. So, in an eight hour day, um, you know, you're talking about. You know, 24 trees times five days a week, we're looking at 120 trees a week. They need to be watered each each week. The gator bag needs to be filled weekly. So that is the most supremely limiting factor we've got going right now. Hence why uh, if we want more trees, uh, the partnership with residents and community members committing to water either their parkway trees or trees in front of their business, that's how the tree wells are going to get filled faster. Because uh, like Chair Norton has, has mentioned, we have 12,000 empty tree wells uh on that timing of an eight hour workday you're looking at like 20 years to be able to establish new trees for two years to get them to the point where you know they can self-sustain so yes we need to yeah, part with our of residents. the problem part of the problem with residents watering is they're going to use potable water because not everybody has a pickup truck that they can load recycled water into so i i just think that one of the major things we have to do is at least get another water truck. I, I know budgets are tight, but it, if we can only water 200 trees a year, you're right, it'll take us forever to try to plant the trees we'd like to plant. Thank you, Commissioner Bremer, for those definitely uh, comments. And um, they're heard, heard loud and clear um, from the community and this commissioner, definitely, thank you. Uh, some more um, relative comments or by this by the commissioners about anything general in the community. I'm ready if uh, you're listening. Um, one is real quick. Um, I'm really excited to go to the Marina Park playground subcommittee meeting that's scheduled for a uh, June 14th. I don't know 430 or 5. I know Commissioner Bremer and Commissioner Shapiro and I believe Nancy O'Connor on that subcommittee. I'm looking forward to that. Um, and then I just had, well, I don't really, I'm kind of a little, a little disappointed that we're really only can meet for an hour. I'd love it if we could meet a little longer, maybe make our 
slot an hour and a half and start a half hour earlier maybe i don't know but i'm just going to throw that out there and my last i do have a question from a community member um about skate parks real quick he's been going around looking at property and blah blah and thinks that he can put a skate park wherever we want but i was wondering a real quick if there's a real quick answer is there any new skate parks in the works and that's all i have we did apply for the prop 68 grant uh, we're still this is actually our second year that we applied for uh the property over by west park uh community center so that skate bowl and then the adjacent property is city owned so uh previously we applied we uh did make it to the final uh, site inspections. However, there were other uh, agencies uh, deemed uh, more in need. So we reapplied again this year and we're very hopeful. So uh, as for skate parks, like in process of being built within the city of Ventura, no, but that is our hopes uh, on that property. Thank you, Commissioner Turner. Yes, thank you, Commissioner Turner. Uh, looking at my pictures here, any other commissioners have any brief communications? Not a, not a comment, but a question more. Um, again, talking about opening up, can we expect to possibly have an in-person meeting next month? Great question that I was gonna have on my notes here too. Thank you so much, uh, Vice Chair Wood. I think uh, council is tentatively slated to start in person July 12th. I know there's some uh, Cal OSHA and other requirements before meeting in person that have not completely been uh, approved yet. I will follow up and uh, let the chair Norn and vice chair would know when we are able to, but as of yet, we have not gotten the go ahead to start our commission meetings in person. Okay, thank you, Stacy. Um, uh, any other commissioners with some communications? Let's see here. Mm -hmm. Okay, it looks like everyone's had a great chance to share. I will drop on my two communications I have written down here. Um, number one is I saw that virtually that the Parks and Rec uh, pamphlet was out. Stacy, great job with team. I had somebody asking the community, is that available in paper this year as well? Did we mail it out? No. And then we'll be going back to paper, do we know? As of right now, it's electronic. If there's anyone with a, a digital divide uh, that doesn't have access to the internet, we can provide. And or if there's any uh, any other factors uh, that limit uh, the ability to read online, we can provide upon request. Uh, we will, moving forward, we will do uh, hard copies uh probably a hybrid and not as many hard copies as we haven't have in the past but yes we will but since everything was so fluid uh you know many agencies have gone digital because we're having to add delete change last minute and once you go to print there's such a lead time for that and once it's out it's out so yeah. this go around we're digital but moving forward uh, hopefully with the fall guide it will be uh, a combination of both Great information. And then if they were having to be watching this meeting and they needed a copy, they just call the Parks and Rec phone yes. number? Yes, 658-4726. Thank you so much, Stacey. That's awesome. Yes. And then a quick shout out to Tyler Nelson and uh, mm -hmm. Eric Burton with our adult sports programs. Uh, they put it together to get our summer session going. And so I'm excited to say that there is a manager meeting tonight on WebEx that I will be going after. The schedules are coming out tonight and first game for my team is next Wednesday. So <laughs> they got the managers and everyone sorted out. So I will let everyone know that adult softball and Ventura and sports are going back. So I'm really excited about that. Um, and with that being said, with no other comments from anybody else, I'm going to say it was a great meeting for our community members that are here. Uh, a big shout out to Trevor again for making his public comment. We can't speak enough about our public members being involved in our process. Uh, and to Carl Van for coming and speaking for Temper Sports. So thank you so much from the Park Norris Commission. We look forward to seeing you at the next time. And this meeting is adjourned. Thank you, commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, staff. Again, we'll see you guys soon. Okay. Thanks, everyone.